Released in 1978, The Fury is a gripping thriller that blends elements of suspense and supernatural intrigue. Directed by Brian De Palma, the film weaves a tale of psychic abilities, government conspiracies, and intense action. As you delve into this cinematic journey, keep your eyes peeled for funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Is there a particular scene or moment in this movie that has had a lasting impact on you? Perhaps it was the first time you watched The Fury that left an indelible mark on your memory. The movie follows the story of a young man with telekinetic powers, and as the narrative unfolds, you'll witness a series of events that are both captivating and thought-provoking. Brian De Palma's storytelling prowess shines through, creating an experience that lingers long after the credits roll. Now we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Your unique perspective adds another layer to the rich tapestry of the Fury. Stay tuned for more intriguing insights and anecdotes about this classic film. There's much more to discover, so keep watching. In the Fury, directed by Brian De Palma, Kirk Douglas portrays former CIA agent Peter Sanza. The narrative revolves around Peter's determined quest to locate his son, Robin, who has been abducted by a covert government organization known as Childress, led by John Cassavetes. This organization seeks to exploit individuals, including Robin, possessing potent psychic abilities for potential wartime applications. Peter collaborates with Jillian, a student affiliated with Childress played by Amy Irving, to rescue his son and thwart the nefarious plans of Childress. Despite the film's high quotient of melodrama and violence, it falls short on credibility with a plot that echoes elements of De Palma's previous work carry but lacks the same impact. The movie unfolds as a fast-paced and exciting thriller characterized by spectacular set pieces. However, the supernatural storyline fails to convincingly coalesce, leaving some viewers questioning its coherence. The film's climax, though, manages to deliver a showstopper, provided one can endure its intensity. While not deemed De Palma's finest work, The Fury showcases the acting prowess of its cast. Kirk Douglas, in particular, gives a compelling performance despite the film's shortcomings. However, some critics argue that the film's slow pacing and lackluster effects, aside from the final moments, hinder its overall appeal. In his quest to locate his missing son, Peter encounters Amy Irving's character, whose performance may be divisive among viewers. Some find her portrayal lacking compared to her previous work in Carrie, suggesting another casting choice might have been more fitting. Despite its flaws, the film is notable for the memorable ending sequence featuring a visually striking explosion of the main antagonist. This cinematic moment, captured from multiple angles, adds a redeeming quality to the overall viewing experience. In conclusion, The Fury may appeal more to dedicated De Palma enthusiasts than to a broader audience. For those less familiar with the director's style, fast-forwarding to the gripping finale might be the most rewarding approach. Filmed in the now-demolished Old Chicago, a groundbreaking indoor theme park and shopping mall in Bolingbrook, Illinois, the amusement park scenes in The Fury provided a unique backdrop. Constructed in 1975 and later dismantled in 1986, the location offers a glimpse into the past. During Fiona Lewis's death scene, a relentless pursuit of perfection led to 38 takes, leaving her nauseous and bruised. Brian De Palma's insistence on authenticity led to the use of a blood-spraying harness only abandoned after Lewis objected. FX artist Rick Baker then crafted a full-body dummy for additional shots, a decision that irked Lewis, questioning the necessity of her earlier ordeal. Producer Frank Yablins, in collaboration with De Palma, contemplated adapting Alfred Bester's sci-fi novel The Demolished Man Post the Fury. The duo's consideration for future projects showcased their creative partnership. In summary, The Fury, set against the backdrop of old Chicago's demise, unfolds with behind-the-scenes intricacies, including the grueling filming experiences of its cast and the potential for further collaborations between De Palma and Yablins. Set against the backdrop of the now-demolished old Chicago, the 1978 film holds intriguing connections and behind-the-scenes tales. In a gripping hotel chase scene, agents pursue the protagonist, played by Kirk Douglas, through the same hotel room featured in The Blues Brothers. Notably, Jim Belushi, brother of Blues brother John Belushi, makes his debut in the movie. Publicity for the film declared a comeback for actress Carrie Snodgrass, absent from theatrical films for eight years. 
Her last credit before the film was in the 1971 telemovie The Impatient Heart. Fiona Lewis, in a 1998 interview, revealed reluctance towards the project, deeming the script foolish. Despite her reservations, her manager convinced her to take the role, a decision that did not yield the expected career boost. These anecdotes provide a glimpse into the lesser-known aspects of the production and the diverse paths of its cast. The movie, intricately woven with connections to old Chicago's demise, offers a nuanced exploration of its characters and their journey, revealing the challenges faced by the actors behind the scenes. The hotel scenes, shared with the Blues Brothers, add an interesting layer to its legacy. In summary, with its ties to old Chicago and the unique experiences of its cast, the film unveils a different facet beyond its on-screen narrative. Capturing moments both on and off camera, it stands as a testament to the intricacies of filmmaking, providing audiences with a richer understanding of its context and creation. In Brian De Palma's second exploration of telekinesis after Carrie, the film from 1978 shares a common thread with its predecessor actress Amy Irving. It delves into psychic abilities, marking the beginning of a series of Fury novels with a total of four entries. However, not all members of the cast shared a favorable view. John Cassavetes and others dismissed it as subpar, poking fun at Irving's serious approach to her role. Cassavetes in jest compared her dedication to treating the movie like Shakespeare, mockingly suggesting she was portraying Joan of Arc. Despite the criticism, the movie stands as a significant piece in De Palma's filmography. It not only explores the supernatural, but also sets the stage for a series of novels. The TV movie, often derided by some cast members, adds an intriguing layer to De Palma's work, showcasing both praise and skepticism from those involved. This venture into telekinesis, following the success of Carrie, further solidifies De Palma's interest in the extraordinary. Amy Irving's presence links the two films, emphasizing her association with his exploration of psychic phenomena. In conclusion, while met with mixed reviews from within its own cast, The Fury contributes to the broader theme of supernatural exploration in Brian De Palma's cinematic journey, establishing connections between characters and themes that transcend the screen. A unique addition to the world of telekinesis, it is a noteworthy chapter in his film legacy. The Fury, a film directed by Brian De Palma in 1978, features notable aspects often overlooked. Contrary to popular belief, Andrew Stevens, despite being commonly associated with this movie, had prior credited roles. Kirk Douglas, a seasoned star, took the lead at De Palma's insistence, aiming to avoid a repeat of the box office struggle faced by their previous collaboration, Carrie. This film served as the debut for talents like Daryl Hannah, Maura Inness, and Jim Belushi. Andrew Stevens, though perceived as a newcomer, had significant prior film experience with six credited roles before The Fury. The decision to cast Kirk Douglas in the lead role reflected De Palma's strategic move to draw audiences with a recognizable name. Despite its later recognition, the film witnessed the introduction of Daryl Hannah, Laura Ennis, and Jim Belushi to the big screen. Their contributions, alongside the experienced Kirk Douglas and Andrew Stevens, shaped the dynamics of the cast. De Palma's deliberate choice of Kirk Douglas highlights the director's commitment to maximizing the film's commercial appeal. In summary, The Fury stands as a pivotal moment for the careers of Andrew Stevens, Daryl Hannah, Laura Ennis, and Jim Belushi. The film, often misunderstood as a breakthrough for Stevens, actually underscores De Palma's calculated casting decisions. This unique blend of emerging talent and established names creates an engaging ensemble showcasing the director's strategic approach to filmmaking. Mark Romanek, now a renowned director, kickstarted his film career as a production assistant on The Fury. This marked his inaugural foray into the film industry, laying the foundation for his subsequent achievements. Amy Irving's preparation for her role as a psychic delved beyond conventional methods. To understand her character's telepathic powers, she attended a biofeedback clinic, immersing herself in different states of consciousness. This personal experience enhanced her portrayal, allowing her to effectively convey the nuances of transmitting and receiving psychic messages. The film's source material, a book, delved into darker aspects that didn't make it to the screen. Peter, the character portrayed by Kirk Douglas, contemplated the unsettling idea of Robin potentially being the Antichrist, even entertaining thoughts of harming him. Additionally, Gillian's parents harbored fears, suspecting that the teens possessed the power to bring about global destruction. 
However, these ominous details were omitted from the cinematic adaptation. In retrospect, these behind-the-scenes insights into the fury shed light on the early career of director Mark Romanek, Amy Irving's unique preparation for her role, and the selective choices made during the adaptation process, offering a glimpse into the movie's untold layers, 